Did you tell R2-D2 you're going to be here? Did you? And C-3PO? Okay, all right, come here. Before, now one of the things that, one of the things that's really, you have Jetsons, they have little Jetson computers inside them. They're trained inside Omniverse. And how about this, let's show everybody the simulator that you were, that you guys learned how to, how to be robots in. You, want, you guys want to look at that? Okay, let's look at that. Run it, please. Nobody's going to be as cute as you. But now we have all, look at all these, look at all these friends that we have building robots. We have, we're building big ones. No, like I said, nobody's as cute as you guys are. But we have Neurobot and we have, we have Agibot, Agibot over there. You know, we have uh, uh, LG over here. They just announced a new robot. Caterpillar, they've got the largest robots ever. That one delivers food to your house. That's connected to Uber Eats. And that's Surf Robot. I love those guys. Agility. Boston Dynamics. There's a sketch tube. Can you turn it into an architectural rendering? Sean. Nice. Now make a video and show me around the room. Here you go. That's great. With Brev, I can share access to my Spark and Ricci, so I'm going to share it with Anna. Hey Ricci, what's Potato up to? He's on the couch. I remember you don't like this. I'll tell him to get off. Potato, off the couch. We can now selectively, cleverly generate data that we can then use to train the AI. So for example, what comes into this AI, this Cosmos AI world model on the left, on, over here is the output of a traffic simulator. Now this traffic simulator is hardly enough for an AI to learn from. We can take this, put it into a Cosmos Foundation model and generate surround video that is physically based and physically plausible that the AI can now learn from. The ChatGPT moment for physical AI is nearly here. But the challenge is clear. The physical world is diverse and unpredictable. Collecting real-world training data is slow and costly, and it's never enough. The answer is synthetic data. Today we're announcing Alpamaya, the world's first thinking, reasoning autonomous vehicle AI. Alpamayo is trained end to end, literally from camera in to actuation out. The camera in, lots and lots of miles that are driven by itself, or human drives it, driven, using human demonstration, and we have lots and lots of miles that are generated by Cosmos. In addition to that, hundreds of thousands of examples are labeled very, very carefully so that we could teach the car how to drive. Mercedes agreed to partner with us five years ago to go make all of this possible. We imagine that someday a billion cars on a road will all be autonomous. You could either have it be a robo-taxi that you're, you're, you're uh, orchestrating and, and renting from somebody, or you could own it and it's driving, for you, driving by itself. Or you could decide to drive for yourself. And so, but every single car will have autonomous vehicle capability. Every single car will be AI-powered. And so the, app, the, the model layer in this case is Alpamayo, and the application above that is the Mercedes-Benz. Okay, and so, so this, entire stack is our first NVIDIA first entire stack endeavor and we've been working on it for this entire time and I'm just so happy that the first AV car from NVIDIA is going to be on the road in Q1 
And then it goes Europe in Q2, here in the United States in Q1, then Europe in Q2, and I think it's Asia in Q3 and Q4. And the powerful thing is that we're gonna keep on updating it with next, next versions of Alpamayo and versions after that. One giant leap to the next frontier of AI. Ruben is here. What do you guys think? This is a Ruben Pod, 1152 GPUs in 16 racks. Each one of the racks, as you know, has a 72 Vera Ruben, or 72 Rubens. Each one of the Rubens is two actual GPU dies connected together. just two of them here. It takes two hours to assemble this. I thought the game changer was really NVIDIA going all in when it comes to autonomous. I mean, they are not watching us from the sidelines. The end-to-end -end platform I thought was extremely significant. The two best physical AI plays in the world, in my opinion, are NVIDIA and Tesla. And I think this was Jensen much more on the offensive. I think last year, playing it more close to the vest, this year was a little more, I think, planning a flag when it comes to physical AI. These models are also world class. All systems are down. <laughs> this never happens in Santa Clara. Is it because of Las Vegas? <clears throat> Somebody must have won, won a jackpot outside. <clears throat> All systems are down. So, the amazing thing is, that is utterly trivial now. That is utterly trivial now. And yet, just a couple of years ago, all of that would have been impossible. Absolutely unimaginable. Well, this basic framework, this basic way of building applications using language models, <laughs> using language models, <laughs> using language models, using language models that are pre trained. This is showing robotics is coming a lot quicker than investors are. Even people in the industry are thinking, robotics, in my opinion, will be in houses around the world. In the U.S., from a humanoid robotics perspective, over the next 12 to 18 months. This is not 5, 10 years away. This is something that's actually coming a lot sooner. And I think that was a clear statement that Jensen was making. Structured copper cables, the most the world's ever used in computing systems ever. And, and um, uh, our 30s drive the copper cables from the top of the rack all the way to the bottom of the rack at 